This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. More about them later in the video. Pre-dyno oil change, about to find out if this motor is doing good or not. Oh, look at that, beautiful. Where did all the metal go? <laughs> From what I've learned, there's supposed to be at least a few chunks in here. This oil, I mean, it's sparkly, but it's not even that sparkly for, for it being a brand new motor. I mean, like, that looks pretty good. I don't see any big chunks. Nah, looks good. Oh, look at the big spring. My piston return spring fell out. Damn it. So I, I think it's fine. I think it's totally fine. We're gonna find out tomorrow. Got the Eclipse loaded up. That went pretty well. Squatting a little bit, but I think we're gonna be okay. Now we've got a two hour drive to the dyno, but first we have to make a little pit stop. I've only ever towed with a school bus that made a thousand pound feet of torque. So this is literally the complete opposite. But honestly, like, Going up this hill right now, pretty fine. I mean, it's definitely slower, but it actually doesn't feel a whole lot different. I mean, that Eclipse, it's pretty light. Even though it's the second heaviest vehicle I own, it's still only 2,600 pounds, 2,700 pounds. <laughs> As you can tell, our pit stop was saving Hunter. <laughs> Jeeps broke again, would you believe it? <laughs> Hopefully this is the only vehicle that breaks in this video. So we're about halfway there. The Sequoia is doing it. I wouldn't say it's going great. We are getting literally 4.9 miles a gallon, even on the highway. I think that the main problem is that it's got a four speed transmission. Every time it shifts, it drops like 1600 RPM and just completely falls flat on space. Anytime we come up to a hill, we're having to like floor it, it's just, it's rough. It's just a little disappointing. Hey, five, five miles gallon, let's go. where Muslim Diesel took his R R R thirty twos. No shot. I'm pretty sure it is. Dude, this is awesome. Dude, I what like in the yeah. world? I'm pretty sure this is the same place. We got here. We're here at Counter Steer. As you can tell, this place is freaking sweet. They work on pretty much exclusively GTRs. We're going to unload the Eclipse right now and hop onto the dyno. Hopefully, everything goes well. After going through three motors and a bunch of other issues, this was the moment we had finally been waiting for. The mid-engine Eclipse was going on the dyno, and I was incredibly excited and, admittedly, slightly nervous. Cars in the dyno room. Started smoking. There's some smoke burning off something. As we get here, it's gotta start having issues that it never had before, but I'm hoping it's just residual stuff burning off, because I did the oil change yesterday, but didn't get oil anywhere, so. With only a few hours available for us to tune, we immediately got the car loaded onto the rollers, strapped down with all the dyno sensors installed. So we're about to start tuning. This here is the man himself. You reached out on Instagram offering to tune up the Eclipse. My name's Yanni, uh, I run Speed by Y. I'm a Miata only specialty tuner. Um, been tuning Miatas for about six years. Saw Caleb was in need and I figured I could kind of swoop in and help him out. But yeah, hit us up, Speed by Y LLC, Facebook and Instagram. Like I said, 
please only Miatas. That's all I want to touch. No so. mid engine eclipses. He doesn't tune them. Only mid engine. <laughs> no, no mid engine eclipses. I'll have stuff in the description if you guys want to check them out. I mean, he came from work. That's how dedicated I did. he is. So oh, yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank of you. Of course, man. It's a pleasure. Um, that looks really warm because I'm dying of heat out here. It's okay. I, I prefer to be moist. You know? And with that, it was time to begin. Yanni started by getting the car settled onto the rollers and then began tuning the lower load, lower RPM cells. Was the mid-engine Eclipse going to hold together? But first, let me take a moment to thank this video sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now browsing the internet without ExpressVPN, it's like driving a car without a seatbelt. Welding without a mask. Grinding without safety glasses. It's just not worth the risk. Every time you browse the internet without it, your internet provider can monitor your activity. That includes all the websites you visit and even your torrenting activity. ExpressVPN reroutes your traffic through their encrypted servers, blocking them from seeing what you are doing. It also protects you from DDoS attacks by switching your true IP address with one of their own. This also allows you to change your online location, which lets you game on other region-restricted servers in games like Halo or Call of Duty. My personal favorite is the fact that they let you choose from over 94 different countries to change your online location to, so you can access content that might not be available in your country right now. For example, The Office is no longer on US Netflix anymore. But with ExpressVPN, you can just switch your online location and watch The Office on Canadian Netflix. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. ExpressVPN has given me access to so many new shows, movies, animes, and that is just so freaking awesome. The absolute best part is that it is incredibly easy to use. All you gotta do, launch the app, connect, and choose which location you want to browse the internet from. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash gingium or visiting the link in the description down below. Thank you so much to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and making this dino day possible. Let's see how much power this eclipse makes. And that is when our first problem appeared. So oil is coming out of the motor from somewhere and getting on things and smoking. So we're trying to figure out where, but never done this before. But thankfully, after a few minutes of searching, we found the source of the oil leak and got it fixed. I believe we're uh, about to do our first baseline pull, so here goes nothing. We saw upwards of 20 PSI, second gear. Definitely not something I would expect from a 12 pound wastegate spring with no boost control. So we're investigating. It gives me flashbacks of that red Civic, but thankfully we had a boost cut on this one. We're gonna try bypassing the boost controller. That'll tell us if it's the boost controller's fault or if it's something else in the system. So uh, no. It was not the boost controller's fault. We ended up hooking an external pressure source to the wastegate and saw that the wastegate only began to open at around 20 psi of pressure. Now, unfortunately, the wastegate that is on this turbo, it doesn't have an interchangeable spring. So we couldn't swap it out with a lower pressure one. Instead, we attempted to adjust the preload on the wastegate rod to hopefully get this turbo to make a little less boost.
And after that second failed attempt, we thought, well, maybe the car isn't actually making 20 pounds of boost. Maybe the map sensor is just reading incorrectly. So we went ahead and hooked the dino's map sensor onto the engine and did another run. No, no, no. Okay, so it definitely was making 20 pounds of boost. And if you looked closely, you would have seen our other issue start to arise. And at this point, we made the, uh, in hindsight, not so smart decision to go ahead, raise the boost cut limit, and attempt to continue tuning. a different view of that last run. For those two poles is when we noticed that the manifold was getting red hot. And I mean, not normal red hot, like excessive red hot. Keep in mind that there was a solid aluminum heat shield over the manifold and you could still see the light shine through and reflect off the intercooler tank. Plus, it was melting the aluminum heat shield. Something was most definitely not right. And the one power number we were able to get confirmed that. Less than 200 horsepower at the wheels on 25 pounds of boost. <laughs> we're going to take off the swirly exhaust and see if that changes anything. Because we're thinking maybe that's just creating a whole lot of back pressure and causing all these issues. Unfortunately, that didn't do anything. The car was still making way too much boost, way too little power, and way too much heat. So with our time running out, we decided to go ahead and call that quits for the mid-engine Eclipse's first trip to the dyno. I will say, we've got some theories as to what happened, what's wrong with the engine, but what we don't know yet is, is anything damaged? Clearly, the exhaust temperature was through the roof. That could have damaged 
the turbo. It could have damaged the pistons, maybe a valve, possibly even blew the head gasket. So in the next video with a mitogen eclipse, we're gonna do a health check. We're gonna fix the turbo. We're gonna fix the weird lack of power issue and head back to the dyno. Just our luck to have weird issues. But hey, I, I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> it looks sick, there we go. We can say that, it looks cool. And it's not broken. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs>